All right, guys, so welcome back. This is going to be the last video of the series of setting up an HA cluster. So once again, we've gotten to the point where we can see the, the cluster is up and running and everything is right with the world. Now, um, just to make sure that it is clustering, though, if it is passing off traffic and, and what have you, you can go to your HA settings underneath the system. HA, and they do have statistics for its load. There's some throughput here, um, so on and so forth. How many sessions are being distributed, all right? Now remember, with active-passive, um, the secondaries are not processing any traffic, but you'll still see the session tables kind of high here. And the reason why is because we had uh, um, session failover, so part of the session table will be synchronized. So what I'm gonna do, just like I said, to keep it short, I'm gonna put up a ping loop to 10 dots. No, actually, you know what? We'll do something even further. We'll ping out to Google DNS. All right. Just keep it going. All right. There we are. Let's go ahead and uh, I don't even know if YouTube will work on here. Um, my little virtual machine. Uh, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. So because we got to make sure our, our employees can still watch funny cat videos right instead of working so all right fanciest mcdonald's in the world sure so here we are not being productive all right um we got our ping loop up okay now the fortigate that is primary if you go to the primary management ip address is is the remote fortigate all right we can also see it here saying master and slave remember in the last video we did reserve the ip address of each of the FortiGates individually, so I can actually access this remote FortiGate HA directly by going to 10.0.2.253. There it is. All right. So um, I can go over to my, I got to stop smacking my lips. Here we go. Uh, we can go to system, go to HA, and as you can see, it is the slave. All right. Uh, it looks like traffic still being passed along, those just fine. All right. But now, and I don't recommend doing this in real life, you don't just unplug your FortiGate. I can do it here because it's in my little test environment. But we just suddenly lost that FortiGate. So we should see, yep, that FortiGate completely going down. All right. And this could be just like a FortiGate crap in the bed, meaning giving up the ghost, dying on us. Look at that, guys. One packet drop. What? What? Look at that. Are we still watching videos? Yeah, totally are. That's a long ad, by the way. Wow. All right. In fact, it works so well. Um, I've had people tell me in class that they weren't even aware that one of the FortiGates in their cluster was down until both of them failed. And you never want that, by the way. <laughs> so let me go ahead and close out of here. And just to demonstrate a point here. Um, if I go now to that main management interface, the 10.0.2.254, all right? Yes, I know. Sign your certs, boy. All right. That'll be a different lesson. Here we are. Admin. Yes, I know it's weak. Leave me alone. All right, here we go. So you see how we're now remote FortiGate HA? All right. Um, and that's because this one is now the primary, therefore it adopted all the, the IP addresses for each one of the interfaces, but we can still access it using 253 because we reserve that off of port 10. All right. I hope that all makes sense, guys. All right. But this guy is dead. This guy is dead. All right. He is dead, dead, dead. So, um... How do we bring it back into the cluster? Well, once it comes to life, once we diagnose it, maybe it was just a lockup or Bob tripped over the cord. I don't know. Um, but once it comes back to life and boots up, it will come back as a secondary. Why? Because that's the default behavior with the clustering that the one that has the most uptime stays the primary. All right. And there's ways to change that if you like one FortiGate or the other or what have you. Um, and the fact that I unplugged it, guys, it's really not happy with me. It's going to want to try to do a file scan on the hard drive to make sure.
we don't have any integrity problems with our file system. See, right there, yelling at me. All right, uh, that happens. Anyways, but if I get a git system stat now, and this is through the console port, I am now the backup. All right, on my remote FortiGates. You can also see this in the GUI. By going to system, HA, we should now have two, ta-da, ta-da. But it comes back as the secondary, all right? There's those outputs that I mentioned about syncing up. Um, you can see them through a console port. Anyways, so what's the big deal here, guys? Well, because this does work so well, all right, as you can see, because it came back as a secondary, there's no re-election process, so there's nothing to interrupt the flow of traffic there. I'm going to stop the spin loop. Make sure that you have some kind of logging turned on. So I'm going to go to my log settings, and this is once again a whole other discussion. But we are going to monitor for events. All right, what kind of events? Now, it was selected underneath all. But if you go to customize to HA events, you will then see log files of it going up and down. All right. Now, I cannot remember if I actually have a hard disk formatted for this bad boy. Um, free space. Maybe I do. I'm not too sure. But it should show up in your log files of the cluster going up and down. And that's exactly what's happening here. Just make sure that you have some kind of email alert or some kind of some kind of message here saying, hey, you know what? I want to know about HA status changes. Whenever my, my status changes, please email it. Um, from, by the way, I recommend that you have your uh, email admin, that probably is you to make a FortiGate account, mail account, right? And then send it to the people that might be responsible. Unfortunately, um, that's all the options the FortiGate gives you is essentially one set of uh, email addresses, right? And regardless of what it is, those same people will get emailed. So the same people for like, you know, HA changes will also be for uh, viruses detected, right? Uh, that might be okay if you're the only one in your IT department working on the FortiGate, but it, to get any more granular control, unfortunately, you're going to have to use like SNMP and another um, server, another management server to do that, or get a Fort Analyzer, and I'll give you more granular control over who gets what messages. So, But without the logging turned on, it works so well, guys, that uh, don't be surprised if you miss a failover. So definitely something you want to keep an eye out. So I don't know if that was helpful. In fact, that was probably crap. But I at least wanted to, to explore something with you on the videos. Um, go ahead and uh, send me an email if you have any questions. And um, I might re-record these once I learn about the new 5.6 features. So, Because like I said, I guess now, everything that I've heard, you don't have to reserve, reserve an actual additional port here to reserve IP addresses for the individual FortiGates. I'm just going to have to look into how to do that. But everything I demoed here should work with 5.2, 5.4, and 5.6. So um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you.